Today we're gonna to be doing sort of a two-part review and how-to. I wanted to show you how to actually charge a LiPo battery on a LiPo charger. I get a lot of questions from new pilots on how to actually do that. And secondly, I wanna talk about the HTRC 1-6S dual LiPo charger. So while I'm pulling this up here on Amazon, check out some of this cool flight footage from uh, a recent flight. I finally got my 6S Sedora V2 to actually fly pretty well, so let me know what you think. Alright, so here we go. We've got the charger here. It is $79.19 on Amazon. Uh, they've got quite a few left. I'll actually post a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up. But just to go over a few quick specs here, we've got 150 watts AC, 240 watts DC, 10 amp max, and it's got uh, all of the balance ports and uh, all of that stuff that you could want. It actually comes with a lot of really nice cables so you can charge all your different batteries. Okay guys, so here's the charger. Comes with wall outlet plug, comes with two LiPo balance port plugs. This is two to six S. So we've actually got a Deans to XT60. We've got a Deans to, I think this is Tamiya. And we've got our Deans to alligator clips. These are actually super handy if you don't have an adapter. You can just go ahead and plug these onto whatever, whatever plug it is that you're trying to charge and they'll work just fine. And of course we've got our bullet to Deans. Let's go ahead and power it on and see what options we're given. We got our nice home screen here. I love the touch screen on this. It's a lot easier to change settings and uh, make adjustments versus just your regular old button press. Those tend to take quite a while. So to begin, we've got channel one, channel two settings. So depending on which plug you're actually trying to charge with, all you have to do is touch the channel to go ahead and access the settings for each one of those. Um, across the top row, we've got LiPo batteries, we've got life, we've got lithium ion, lithium high voltage, nickel metal hydride, nickel metal cadmium, uh, regular lead acid, smart batteries, and then at the bottom you've got your settings, memory monitor, and calibration. Uh, it's really easy. This is really, really straightforward, guys, but uh, everything seems to be working great. When you're going to, to charge just a regular LiPo battery, I've got a CNHL 1100 milliamp right here. You just go ahead and plug it in. Then you connect your balance port. This is a 6S, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug my 6S port in. And then you choose LiPo, and you're presented with all of your settings. You've got your battery cell count. One thing that's nice about this charger is that it automatically adjusts the battery cell count for whatever particular battery you're plugging into it. So if it was a 4S, as soon as you came to this screen, it would automatically be a 4S. You don't have to worry about that. I think a lot of people get confused um, on how to set the charge for different batteries. So that's just one nice way to um, relieve some hassle, right? Next, you've got your charge current. This will go from a tenth of an amp. So if you wanted to charge something smaller, like these little XT30 uh, 450 Beta FPV batteries, you're not gonna overcharge it. And then it goes all the way up to uh, 10 amps per channel. So we'll go ahead and set that all the way down. When I'm charging LiPos, I always like to charge them at one C um, or less. So for these 1100 milliamps, I just leave it at one amp. As you can see, the screen is very responsive to touch. Um, it doesn't have any of those weird features with other touch chargers where you have to press and then kind of hold to get things to start. 
And then on the top uh, right hand side, you've got your ending voltage. You can just leave that there. Um, we're not getting into any really specifics on what that should be set at. Really 4.2 volts is good. If you wanna get a little extra life out of your battery, you can drop it down to 4.15 volts and uh, that will make the battery last a little bit longer. But then again, you're not gonna have as much charge, so your flight times aren't gonna be as long. And then down here on the bottom right hand side, uh, that's for discharge settings. Um, but you'll notice actually, across the top, we have a few different options. We've got storage, we've got charge, which is just a regular old charge, not a balance charge. Then we have our balance charge, and then we have discharge. Now you can see discharge current, now that lights up, gives us some options for the discharge current. I believe the max discharge current is 10 amps on this particular charger. It says T240, but that's 240 DC, not AC. And then once you're at back at balance charge and you wanna get started on your charge, you simply hit start and it's charging. So when it's actually charging, you have one option and that is the cell uh, voltage. So this will actually tell you the individual voltage per cell and the capacity that each cell is at. This battery is pretty much full, um, so nothing really interesting there. Unfortunately, if you wanted to check the internal resistance, some of these touchscreen style chargers, you can just sort of touch and it will flip over and show you the internal resistance. On this one, unfortunately, you have to go back, you have to stop the charge, and then you need to go to the home screen and choose monitor, and then you choose IR check, give it a second, and there we go. We have our internal resistance. This battery's doing okay, we've got a sort of a high cell here, but I think that's just natural as it's going up the cell count. You can actually balance it from here, but I'm not sure what amp it's charging at or what C rating it's charging at, so I don't like to do that. I like to always go to LiPo, make sure all of my settings are correct, and hit start. Sorry guys, it was getting a little boring there. I had to show you guys my seven inch long range tester that I'm working on here. It's on a Sedora seven inch frame. It's basically the same exact thing as a Sedora V1, but it's got seven inch arms. It's running the Eco 2 2807 motors, seven inch props. These motors are awesome and you actually can't go wrong. They're 15 bucks a pop. So uh, they're really nice motors, super smooth. Originally, it wasn't supposed to run DJI, but I was having terrible interference on 2.4 gigahertz, so I went ahead and crammed a Vista unit in there. It does not look pretty, I know. I'm working on it a little bit to try to make it fit a little bit better. But 6S, got the GoPro on the front. So far, I've been able to get about 2,500 feet up the side of a local mountain. Check out some footage from the last flight. do some cruising with this bad boy. Okay, back to the battery charger. In the settings, you've got some options here for your buzzer volume, so you can turn that up or down. You've got your low input voltage, so basically if a battery is totally dead, you can sort of set what it says as an unsafe level to start charging at. Um, you can actually adjust the input power per channel, so as you can see, it's 75 watts per channel as a max output power for charging. Um, I would not recommend this if you're trying to charge like 10 batteries per channel, but for me this works great because I don't have to mess with the parallel charging boards. I've had no problems with them in the past, but I don't feel like they really balance, balance each cell as well as they could have been balanced. I like having a dual port, makes it really easy 
You can get two packs charged at a time, or if you have some custom lithium ion cells, or maybe, you know, for the micro long range, you've got some actually purchased lithium ion cells. You can charge one over on this side and charge a regular LiPo on this side. So, you know, having a dual charger, it, it is really a nice feature. Let's go ahead and get out of here and go into some of the memory functions. You can actually set charge rates per battery. So if you had maybe um, a couple of these small ones, like I was mentioning before, you like to charge those at 0.5 amps. Um, and those are 4S batteries. You can come in here and you know change the settings for that particular battery. And then next time you go to charge that battery, all you have to do is plug it in and come and press your saved memory item here. You have a lot of the same settings for each one of these. The lithium ion, I don't know why it defaults to 4.1 volts. Uh, those also charge up to 4.2. Lithium high voltage, there you go. You got 4.35 if you got any of those kind of batteries. Um, you know, you can also take the alligator clips and actually charge up regular old lead acid batteries. That's pretty much it. This is a really straightforward charger. I've put in about 50 packs through it so far, including these lithium ion ones. Some of the cheap chargers I've found actually <laughs> fry themselves when they start charging lithium ions for some reason. I've had it happen twice now. So, um, and those were just on regular old, you know, one amp settings. So I'm not sure what the issue is with that. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. Now, the last portion is showing everybody how to actually charge a lithium ion battery. I said I was gonna cover that in this video, so I'm going to do it, right? You've got your two ports down here at the bottom, right? You've got your main XT60, and this is what's known as a balance port. This corresponds to your balance lead on your LiPo battery, this guy. This is the main charge port, which corresponds to this. When you first get this charger and nothing is plugged in down here at the bottom, you always have to remember red goes to red and black goes to black. Don't mess those up. Um, this charger has some safety features, so I don't think you really could mess anything up, but just so that you're aware. Then all you need to do for this charger, right, is plug in your XT60 and then go down here to your balance port and plug it into the corresponding balance port, which is 6S on this one. We're on channel one, it's the left side. All we have to do now is hit LiPo. Now, you'll see all of the settings up here. You wanna make sure that you're in balance charge. If you are in storage, that's not gonna work because that's gonna discharge the battery so that you can store it. Charge is just gonna be a straight charge just through those main leads. Balance charge is gonna balance the individual cells in the battery making sure that each cell has the same voltage as the one next to it. So we wanna be on this setting. Top left, battery cell is 6S. That's gonna be input automatic with this charger. You don't have to worry about that. The charge current. I charge at 1C, which is typically 1.1 amps for an 1100 milliamp battery. Um, the way that you'll go ahead and figure this out, it's the easiest way that I do it is, if you have a number with a thousand, you literally just take a decimal and put a decimal in between the first two numbers and then use those first two numbers to determine your charge amperage. So if we do that here, that would be 1.1 amps. So technically we could charge this battery at 1.1 amps. Now, for example, if you have a smaller 4S battery like this one. This one is a 450 milliamp hour 4S. So we're gonna do the same thing. There's no first number, so we're just gonna put 0.4. So for this battery, we would change the settings to be 0.4, and that's gonna be a 1C charge. So I'll move this back up to 1.1 amps. And then all I have to do is hit start. It's gonna charge up the battery here. When it's finished, you'll see at the very top, it'll start flashing end or complete. And then you're good to go. You just unplug it and use the battery.
All right, guys, let me know what you thought. I hope that was informative. I hope it helped some of you. Let me know in the comments what your favorite charger is so I can go check it out. And I'll see you in the next one.